All right, see how many takes this takes. Hi, I'm Mike Henderson, and today I'm drawing an Old Man Logan piece. I was definitely drawing the minute I could pick up a pen, crayons on placemats, all that sort of thing. But as soon as I saw comics, it just, it was a light bulb going off. You know, it was just, oh, I want to do that. Dan Jurgens and John Romita's Thor run had just started. And I think I flipped to the back of the issue and there was an ad for uh, the Joe Kubert School in there. Storytelling classes and lettering classes and design. And I mean, it was completely comprehensive. You got a little bit of everything. That was my next jump. I started bringing my portfolio around to different conventions and things. And I happened to go up to uh, Walt Simonson at a Baltimore show and I just showed him my stuff. And he said, you know, just give me a minute. I'm gonna call somebody. And I started working for Marvel about two weeks later. I found Logan at the right age, you know, when that sort of slight anti-hero was really appealing to, you know, an early teenager. The art on Wolverine books was always great, so I drew Wolverine as often as possible, and clearly still doing it. I struggle a little bit with direct homages to covers. I don't want to take too much from the original. I want to give it, you know, something of my own while being respectful of the original art. I wanted an iconic one, and I couldn't think of one quite as iconic as Todd McFarlane's, but I also wanted to incorporate a couple of characters from the series that I was doing, and that seemed kind of the perfect combination to substitute Old Man Logan for Wolverine and Maestro for the Grey Hulk. It's sort of wild and exaggerated, and you know, his mask is bigger than it should be, and the claws are bigger than they should be. Everything about it is just kind of bombastic that I really like about it. I usually start with a three by four, a little credit card size rough. Usually I just go straight to pencils. I've never had an inker. I've always inked my own stuff. So all of my pencils are basically gibberish to anybody but me. And then I just sort of let the inks develop organically. I'm very much a whatever tool gets the job done kind of guy. So for straight edges and buildings, et cetera, I might use Sharpies and tech pens and, and all that sort of stuff. When I'm inking organic shapes, you know, humans, trees, flora, you know, that sort of stuff, bushes, I tend to use mostly brush. I like the feel of pen and brush on paper. I have started doing some digital stuff uh, on Deadman Logan. Some of the gray tones are digital, like a digital zip -a tone that I use. And then Nolan takes and makes way better than I ever intended. But 100% of all professionals over the last 60 years have been doing it this same way. And uh, continuing to do it that way, at least for me, feels right. It takes on a different complexion because now I'm drawing it sort of from the perspective of trying to give the same or a similar experience to someone who's reading it as I had you know, when I was a kid reading it. You never know which page it's gonna be for somebody. Sometimes it's an action page or just a character moment or something, and when it affects them that well, it makes you feel like you did a pretty good job. And that's energizing when you go back to draw your next page, because you think, you know, maybe one page in here is gonna be something that sticks in somebody's mind, you know, for a long time. You know, so yeah, it was a little scary. You know, when you first go up to somebody and be like, hey, can you look at my art? It's probably terrible, but please, 